It's a new, it's a new, it's a new, new, new. It's a new, it's a new, it's a new, new, new. New, new, new. New, 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 new. Okay, this week let's kick it off with. Okay, there's a kind of like a half updated, half new product. Um, so a while ago we bought a whole bunch of these um, hammer header kits for Raspberry Pi Zero that only come with uh, the male plug header and uh, we kind of forgot to put them in the store and then we found them and we're like oh we should really stock these so if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero W or 2W or original Zero and you want to plug in a um, bonnet or a hat or a fat or whatever some sort of thing that uses the 2x20 header and you don't want to solder you don't want to learn how to solder you can use these Pimeroni hammer headers um, and what they do is they let you um, do this kind of cold weld where you um, literally use a hammer or a mallet, use any one that you have already, and you gently tap, 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 and pop the pins of this um, header through, and it will make a solid connection that you then don't have to solder. Um, so I'll show it on the overhead, because it's kind of funky. We haven't shown these in a while. Okay. Uh, so you get your Raspberry Pi Zero, and it comes with like a plastic plate, and then uh, these little screws that help line things up. And um, these hammer headers, you can see there's like these little uh, nubs here, um, and they're, sp they're kind of like springs. Um, like you can't press them in by hand, but again, uh, if you put this uh, thick piece of plastic on and uh, hammer with a, a mallet, um, it will uh, press all the way through, uh, pop in, and then you'll basically have a solid connection without needing to solder. Um, so it could be useful if you don't have a soldering iron um, or you don't trust yourself with one or you don't want to give someone else one. Um, yeah, it's a couple bucks and all you need is a mallet or hammer. Okay, next up. Okay, uh, this is the um, update to the AP3429A, which was a buck converter for about five volts down to three volts. Uh, we love these little buck converters. Once in a while you just need, you know, an amp or so out um, and you want to give it a couple AA batteries or you want to give it a LiPo or give it USB. And an LDL won't do the job because again, you need an amp and you're not gonna get an amp out of a small LDL. The only thing is the AP3429A, you'll never believe what happened, Phil. Um, it's um. basically unavailable. There's a chip shortage, <laughs> I can't, I can't hey, get it. Hey, where you, where you guys been? How's it going? Yeah, so we ordered the chips uh. and we don't think they're ever coming in. And so I was like, you know what? Let's just revise this. I found a similar enough uh, chip. Uh, can you go two more? This one? Yeah. It's the TLV62569. So this is an update slash revision, but I'm keeping the same product ID because it's basically just a better version of the previous chip. It's a slightly higher frequency. Um, it actually has higher current output. Uh, I also uh, doubled the copper thickness on the PCB to two ounce copper. Um, I still would only really recommend it for about like one, 1 1.2 amp continuous, but you can get, uh, you know, two amp peak. I think I got 1.5 amp continuous actually on this board, but you know, I, I won't promise it. It depends on the ambient temperature. Um, but if you do need like a ton of current at 3.3 volts uh, for Wi-Fi for cellular, uh, this is a very fine uh, buck converter. And uh, this little breakout will, uh, it's pin compatible with many uh, TO220 TO size uh, LDOs. I think the LD1117 3.3, this is pinout compatible. Okay, next up. Another update, uh, this is the Icarus IoT board. This is the NRF 91, oh goodness. Can you go to the next thing? I keep forgetting the whole part number. Yeah. It's the uh, NRF 9160. Uh, and this updates a couple things. One, there's now flash memory on the board. Second, it's updated, uh, yeah, and the flash memory you see on the back. Uh, the module itself got updated to like engineering change order B1 instead of B0. Mm. Um, and probably another couple other component tweaks. So this is V2 of the Icarus Feather. However, it is essentially the same thing. Um, just a couple extra updates and upgrades. It's still a Feather compatible. Uh, it is still a cellular module that you can program. Um, I think it uses Zephyr RTOS to program again, uh, not Arduino or CircuitPython or MicroPython compatible. All right, next up, and uh, you know, this is why we had the code. Banana, banana. Um, we noticed that we didn't have any banana plugs in the store. I thought it would be a good idea to stock some, and I thought these were kind of neat because they're not just banana plugs, they're like stackable plus retractable, uh, which was kind of cool. So these are four millimeter standard um, banana plugs. So I'll show them on the overhead because you kind of got to show the. Uh, yeah, I'll show the two different colors here before we go. Stackability and. Uh, 
retractability. Okay, so first up, they're stackable. So uh, each one has a slot at the end. And so you're like, hey, I want more. And they slide in very nicely. They're very solid. Uh, they got little grippy so you can remove them. Um, what I thought was kind of neat is they have this little retracting uh, plastic protector. So these can be like hanging out on your bench top and like you don't have to worry about them touching um, because they're protected. But then when you're ready uh, to insert them, um, they just sort of like, you know, just by pressing, they, they naturally do this like a little retraction thing. And uh, you can plug them in uh, easily and safely. Uh, they're very high quality cables. I really like them. Uh, so we have, you know, power and ground, very useful for, um, you know, you have your benchtop power supply, your multimeter, um, or other test equipment that uses a uh, four millimeter standard size banana plugs. Okay, and this banana, week banana. we have two stars of the show this week besides you, Lady Ada, and our team and our customers and everyone who makes this Adafruit thing go. Yeah. Our community. It's two boards. Look at these two That's things. That's right. We got two updates. We've got the ADS 1015 and the ADS 1115. Uh, two. Uh, I squared C analog digital converters are very popular, um, but we've stomach QTified them because we love to add plug and play uh, support to all of our breakout boards. So we're kind of going backwards in time and now we're getting to the older boards. Um, so these are 12 and 16 bit ADCs. They work over I squared C. There's tons of support for them. There's um, Arduino support, CircuitPython, MicroPython, Everyday Python, Rust, whatever. It's like these are kind of ancient and so they're. Um, they're well documented and well supported. Um, you know, the 16 bit's a little bit more expensive. 12 bit is going to be good enough for most uses. Uh, it's actually kind of not, it's not common to see I squared C ADCs. Most ADCs are SPI. And so, um, you know, these are uh, very handy for when you just have to add some high quality analog inputs or if you have a board, you know, a propeller chip, for example, or a Raspberry Pi that has to have an ADC. Uh, plug it in. And so now what we've updated is it comes in the STEM QT format, which means it's got these JST SH connectors. You can use cables to plug and play them with our feathers, with Raspberry Pi, so no soldering required. Um, of course, if you want to connect to the output pins, you, you may want to solder to them. Um, but at least for the entry level wiring and testing, uh, no soldering is yeah. required. And uh, you can have up to four of these, I think, on one I squared C bus just by uh, noodling with the address pin, I think tying it uh, to ground or tying it to SCL will um, let you choose multiple addresses as well. So, uh, you know, very easy, very reliable way of adding multiple 12 or 16-bit analog inputs. And that is New Products This Week. Whoa.